unit is uh, analytical geometry, and uh, that is BMA 1205. So the first thing that you're doing, uh, basically a background on the Cartesian plane, we know that the Cartesian plane has uh, the x-axis and the y-axis, and points uh, there are given in terms of those two uh, coordinates. So uh, then uh, we start with uh, the distance between uh, two points on the Cartesian plane. So if you're given two points, uh, this is your Cartesian plane. Uh, you're given two points. Uh, this is your point P1 with coordinates x1, y1. And this is uh, your point P2 with, co with coordinates x2. Uh, y2, and you want to get the distance between uh, these two points. Uh, we know that uh, basically we can get this using Pythagoras theorem. So that would, that implies that uh, P1, P2 squared uh, is basically going to be uh, the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 are squared. And of course, uh, these coordinates can still be x2 minus x1, uh, depending on where your x2 is and where your x1 is. So, so this is p1, p2, sorry. So that is p1, p2 is the square root of that. So if you're given two points, uh, for example, Uh, you're given to find the distance between the point 3, negative 2 and negative 1, 5. Uh, we use the same. So we have our x1 there as 3, our x2 as negative, uh, negative 1, our y1 is negative 2, and our y2 is 5. So using the same formula, uh, we get that uh, our distance is going to be a negative 1 minus 3 squared uh, plus 5 minus negative 1 squared, which... Uh, finally, uh, gets you to the answer as uh, 7.311. Uh, so if, uh, for example, the question is use the distance formula to show that the points 4, 0, uh, 2, 1, and 5, 7 are the vertices of a right angle triangle. Uh, basically, the idea is still the same. You find the distance between uh, the, the, the two points, the first two points, and then the next two points. And of course, you must clarify that it does uh, conform to the Pythagoras theorem. That's when uh, you will have confirmed that they actually are the vertices of a right angled triangle. So next we go to internal division of a line segment. And uh, if uh, we can use the next page. So if Still on our Cartesian plane, uh, you have two points. Uh, let's say this is your point P1 with coordinates x1, y1, and this is your point P2 with coordinates x2, uh, y2. And you have a point that is dividing these two points in the ratio m is to n. So let's say our point is r and has coordinates x, uh, y. So we know that uh, this is m and the distance from here to here or uh, that should be uh, that should be n. So from that uh, we know that if we draw this as two triangles, both of them right angle triangle. The corresponding sides will have, uh, the ratio will be the same for any two corresponding sides. So that implies that if P1 R over R P2 is M over N, then that ratio should stand for all uh, the other corresponding sides. So if we say like uh, this is our, we can call this W, and we can call this, uh, for example, 
or even Z. Let's call it Z. So then that implies that uh, P2 uh, Z over R W will also be M over N. Uh, uh, that dip, uh, it has to go as per the triangle that has the ratio M. So this one is not going to be right uh, because M is for this first uh, triangle. So then that implies that uh, RW over P2Z is what is going to be our M over N. At the same time, P1W over RZ is also going to be M over, over N. So then, uh, if we use, if we can use these two to get uh, what is going to be the coordinate of the X and uh, the Y. So if we start with this P1W, P1W, uh, we know that the coordinate, the X coordinate for W is X. So that would give us X minus uh, X1. And then we have RZ. RZ will give us X2, X2 minus X. And we are saying that this is M over, over N. So that implies that our, if we cross multiply that, we'll have NX minus NX1 being equal to MX2 minus X. Uh, then we can say that uh, Uh, M, this is mx2 minus mx. So this will imply that uh, nx plus mx uh, is equals to nx1 plus mx2. So then if we factor out x, I will get x to be nx1 plus mx2 over n plus m. And uh, if you uh, come back to our slide, you will see that that's basically what you're saying is uh, uh, the value of x or uh, how to get the x coordinate uh, for that point that divides uh, that line internally in the ratio m is to n. So you would use the same, uh, the same uh, method to get a y, where now we would have to use, we have used this one, uh, which is uh, P1W, RZ. So we use uh, the, this other one, P2Z, no, RW over P2Z. Uh, this will also give us M over N, which is what will give us how to get the coordinate of Y. And we'll get that Y, on the other hand, uh, is going to be, n y1 plus m y2 over n plus uh, plus m. So uh, on our slide we have an example. Find the coordinates of the point R which divides the straight line joining the coordinates 5, 3 and 0, 1 internally in the ratio 2 is to 3. So we use that, uh, the method there, this method here, this will give us the x coordinate this one will give us our y coordinate. So that's basically what we've done there. And here to give us our coordinates as uh, 3, uh, 3. Now, when we talk about external uh, division of a line, uh, this now implies that uh, we still have our Cartesian plane. And then uh, we have our points here. So our original line uh, is the whole of this, uh, which we can say is P1, P2, uh, P1 with coordinates X1, Y1, and P2 with coordinates X2, Y2. So uh, the scenario here is we are talking about uh, the whole of this being our M, and then uh, this is our N. 
So uh, we would still uh, use uh, the same uh, ratios. Uh, we have the whole of this triangle. And then it is similar uh, to that triangle. So we can say uh, this is maybe our our R1, R2, and R3. Then again, we take the corresponding ratios. The corresponding ratios would be uh, you have P1, P2 over P1, P2 being our distance. So now that would be over. Uh, this is R2, P2. So that is uh, the first, the, uh, the side for this bigger triangle. That is our first triangle. And then the, similar, the, the triangle is similar to this one. So that would give us, this is R, this is P. And this would, would give us M over N. And then uh, that implies the same would apply for all the other sides. So P1, R3 over, uh, we can say this is R4. So over R2, R4 will also be M over N. And then the last uh, ratio there would be P2, R3 over P2, R4 would also be M over N. So then uh, we find the corresponding uh, sides. So this would give us the coordinate here is going to be x2, y1. So for P2, R3, of course, we'll have uh, y2 minus y1. Then uh, for P, R3, that would be x2 minus x1. So uh, if you follow the same trend that we did with the first, uh, with internal division, uh, we come to see that uh, the point R in this case is going to be given by mx2 minus nx1 over m minus n. And then the y coordinate is going to be my2 minus ny1 over m minus n. So uh, if we do this example, uh, we can uh, see how to work with it. So we have find the coordinates of the point R, which divides the line joining the points, negative 2, negative 4, and negative 1, negative 3. Externally, in the ratio, R4 it is to 5. So it's good to note that uh, uh, the, the, the term externally can be used, and then uh, the ratio is given as 4 is to 5. Or alternatively, the ratio can still be written as 4 is to negative 5 without uh, the term externally being are used there. So in that case, it's up to you or uh, you are expected to know that 4 is to negative 5 will imply that it's a negative direction. Uh, so that is uh, external division. So we use the same, uh, we use the method we've talked about there. So that would give us 4 negative 1, uh, 4 into negative 1 minus 5 into negative 2 over 4 minus 5 for our x coordinate and 4 negative 3 minus 5 into negative 4 over 4 minus 5 for our Y coordinate. So that gives us the point as negative 6, uh, 8. For midpoint, uh, of course, uh, we simply take uh, the corresponding coordinates for uh, the points that we are talking about and divide by 2. So x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. Next, we move to slope and inclination. To see what is the relation uh, between uh, the two. So generally, uh, we know that the slope is uh, the angle that a line forms uh, with the x-axis, of course, measured anticlockwise. So like in this case, we are talking about that being our uh, inclination, rather. Then the slope is basically uh, the gradient. So uh, if we have a parallel line, a line that is parallel to our x-axis, this is our x-axis, of course. This is our y-axis. So if you have a line that is parallel to the x-axis, and we have two points on this line. Uh, let's say uh, this is our point P with coordinates x1, y1. And this is our point P2. Uh, this is our point P2 with coordinates x2, 
explain uh, too. Uh, we know that this angle is the same as this one, so this is still going to be our theta, which is our angle of inclination. And uh, we know that uh, this angle is right angled, so we know that tan of this theta uh, is going to give us change in y over change in x. So uh, the coordinates of this point uh, will be x2, y1. So change in y over change in x will give us y2 minus y1. Uh, Tan theta, so tan theta is opposite over hypotenuse, op opposite over adjacent rather. Tan uh, is opposite over adjacent. Our opposite is y2 minus y1, and then our adjacent is x2 minus x1. Okay, then at the same time, we know that the gradient, if you're getting the gradient, uh, which we denote by m of this line, it is changing y over changing x. So the gradient of our line is going to be y2 minus y1. So that is changing y over a change in x. x would be x2 minus x1. So uh, we can see that the two of them are uh, the same or they are equal. So by virtue of that, we say that tan theta uh, is equals to m or m uh, is tan uh, theta. So uh, that is the relation. So uh, example here, you're told to find the inclination theta uh, of the line that passes through the points negative 2, 1 and 1, 5. So the line is passing through negative 2, negative 1 and uh, 1, 5. What you're supposed to get is the inclination. So if we get uh, the gradient, which is m, then we can find the tan inverse of uh, of m, we'll get our angle. So uh, that is 5 minus negative 1 over 3, 1 minus negative 2, which will give us 6 over 3, which is 2. Uh, therefore, we get the tan inverse of a 2, which will give us our theta as 63.43. So that's our angle of inclination. Next equation of a straight line uh, can be expressed in three ways. We have point slope form, uh, which is y2 minus y1. Uh, of course, with the consideration that you have two points, uh, P with uh, points uh, with coordinates x1, y1, and uh, Q with coordinates x2, y2. So point, point, lo, plo, point slow form would be y2 minus y1 into uh, is equals to m into x2 minus x2, then slope intercept form y is equals to mx plus c, and then general form ax plus by plus c is uh, zero. So uh, we know that two lines are parallel uh, if they have the same gradient, and two lines are perpendicular if the product of their gradient is a uh, negative one. An example there, find uh, the slope intercept form of the equation of the line that passes through the a point and parallel to this. So we know that parallel lines have the same gradient. So we get uh, what is the gradient of that line. So we express it in terms of y is equals to mx plus c and then find what m is. In this case, we find that m is two and then the line is passing through the point negative three, two. Uh, so the equation of this line will be y minus uh, uh, 2 over x plus 3, and then we equate that to our gradient, which we have found there to be 2. So that gives us the equation of that line as y is equal to 2x plus 8. Angle uh, between two lines. Uh, angle between two lines, if we have two lines... So this is the first line that we have. We can call it L1. And then we have our second line, L2. So we know that uh, we can call the angle in of inclination L1 as theta1. So that is theta1. And then the angle of inclination of L2 as theta2. So of course we know that uh, the angle between these two lines, this one, uh, is going to be theta2 minus uh, theta 1. And uh, from uh, previous topic, we, we learned that tan theta uh, is equals to m. So uh, what we want to get here is tan of theta 2 minus theta 1. And this one, uh, we can express it uh, in terms of the compound angle. So that would give us tan of theta 2 minus tan of theta 1 over 1 plus 
uh, turn of theta 1, turn of theta 2. Then uh, we know that turn of theta 2 is going to be uh, the same as m2 by virtue of the fact that tan theta is m. And then this is going to be minus m1 over 1 plus m1 uh, m2. So this is uh, the formula for getting the angle between any two uh, lines. Uh, we have an example here. Find the angle between the lines. Uh, the first line is 2x minus y minus 4 is equal to 0. And our second line is uh, 3x plus 4y minus 12 is equal to 0. So of course we get what is our m1 and what is our m2. Uh, 2 and negative 3 over 4. Then we follow the formula as it is. Uh, so that would give us uh, that calculation uh, here. And then our answer is the fact that our theta comes to be 76.79 uh, then and next you move to a uh, distance from a point uh, to a line and this is uh, generally uh, given by the formula d is uh, ax plus by plus c uh, over square root of a squared plus b squared which implies that uh, the first instance uh, the, the equation of the uh, function given or of the line given must be expressed in general uh, form. So we can go direct to the example there. Find the distance from the point 2, 3 uh, to the line uh, 5x plus 6 is equal to 2y. Only thing to note is that uh, if you're talking about distance from uh, distance from a given line uh, for example, you have uh, this line. So there are two scenarios. You can have uh, the distance, you can have uh, the point on this side, or you can have the point on this side. So this is distance from that point to that line, and this is distance from uh, the point to uh, the line. So uh, generally, you find that uh, when you're looking, using this formula, uh, you'll find a negative distance, or you, you get a positive distance. So if you find that the uh, distance you're getting is negative. It simply implies that the point P and the origin lie on the same side. So uh, this one, uh, if the scenario is, we are talking about a point that is lying in such a point, or in, on, on this side where we have the origin and the point being on the same side, in that case, we'd have a negative uh, distance. If uh, it's on the other opposite, they're lying on opposite sides, we'll have a positive distance. So we have an example there, find the distance from the point to three to the line 5x plus 6 is equals to 2y. So expressed uh, in general form, that would give us 5x minus 2y plus 6 over. And then uh, a squared there is our a is 5. Uh, we can see it there. This is our a. This is our b. Our b is going to be uh, negative, five, negative 2y. So that would give us negative 2y. Uh, then b is negative 2. So uh, 5 squared plus negative 2 squared. Uh, for our denominator, uh, we work it out, then that gives us our distance as 1.857. Uh, so that is uh, our first topic. We move to the second topic, which is uh, the circle. So we start with the standard equation of a circle. And the standard equation of a circle uh, generally uh, depends on uh, the center of the circle. So if standard equation. Uh, if the circle has its center at the origin, so we are talking about uh, this kind of scenario. Uh, this is the center of the circle, and the coordinates there are 0, 0. Uh, we get uh, this is a point P with coordinates x, y on the circle. And we know that the distance from the center uh, to any point on the, on the circumference is, uh, of course, our radius. So the coordinates here uh, is going to be x, uh, 0. So by Pythagoras theorem, uh, that implies that we'll be talking about r uh, being a square root of x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared. So that implies that x squared plus y squared is equals to r squared, which is a standard equation of a circle that has its uh, center at the origin. 
if the circle on the other hand has its center not at the origin so we we have a center here which has coordinates hk uh, then same scenario this is still our r this is a point on the circumference that has the coordinates x y uh, with the same argument uh, this point here will have x okay so we'll have x minus h squared uh, plus y minus k squared being r r squared so this is the equation standard equation of a circle that has its center not at the origin or has its center at uh, hk and this one has its center at the origin so uh, the general equation on the, the, the general equation of these uh, two circles on the other hand uh, is given by uh, expanding so if we expand this uh, we general we end up with a general equation uh, which is x squared plus y squared plus dx plus ey plus c uh, is equals to zero. So that's basically uh, the general equation of a circle that has its center at hk. Find the equation of the circle centered at uh, c with the radius 4. So we have this question. We find this, uh, the circle, the equation of the circle that has center at c. So the center is at 2, negative 1. And then uh, the radius is 4 units. So r is 4. So that implies we'll have x minus 2 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equals to 16. So uh, we can leave it as a standard equation or we open up the bracket so that would give us x squared uh, plus y squared so uh, minus 4x plus uh, 2y and then that would give us 4 4 plus 1 5 uh, minus 11 I is equals to uh, zero. And then uh, if uh, uh, if we move to the next question, uh, the point at uh, three eight lies the point. Uh, 3, 8 lies on the circle whose center is 6, 4. Uh, just want to confirm uh, something slight here. Yeah. So we go to the next question. Uh, the point uh, 3, 8 lies on the circle whose center is that. Find the general equation of the line. So this, uh, in this case, you are given the point and we are given at the center. We don't have the radius. So that implies the first thing we have to do is find the radius. So f getting the radius would be getting the distance between uh, the point that you're given lying on the uh, circumference and the center. So we get the distance between the point 6, 4 and uh, 3, 8. This should give us uh, the radius. So this is the center. 3, 8, 6, 4 is the center. Uh, 3, 8 is the point on the circle. So that would give us first to get radius, which is going to be the distance between these two. And uh, that would give us uh, uh, 6 minus 3 squared plus 4 minus 8 uh, squared. So this would give us R as that would give us 9 plus 16, that is 25. Uh, root, which implies R squared is. Uh, 20, R squared is uh, 25. So now that we have R and we have this point that lies uh, at the circumference of the circle, that would give us x minus 3 squared plus y minus 8 squared being equal to uh, 25. So if we open up uh, this bracket, uh, we'll be able to get the general equation of the line.
And uh, actually, the question is asking us to find uh, the general uh, equation of that line. And the general equation, uh, knowing that what we are supposed to do is simply uh, to expand, give us our, function, our equation as x squared plus y squared minus 12x minus 8y plus 27 uh, is equal to uh, 0. Find the center and the radius of the circle. Find the center and the radius of the circle, x squared plus y squared plus 2x plus y, 6y minus 40 is equal to 0. So for us to get the center of the circle, the first thing we have to do is we have to express it in standard form. So it is in general form, we express it in standard form. So that's x squared plus y squared. x squared um, plus y squared plus 2x plus 6y minus 40 is equals to 0. So this would give us x plus 1 squared plus y plus 3 uh, squared. So that would be 40 uh, plus 9 uh, plus 1. So that would give us 50. So from here we can uh, get what it is that we are supposed to get. We are supposed to get the center and uh, the radius. So that implies the center is going to be negative 1, negative 3, and the radius is going to be square root of uh, 50, which would give us 7.07, uh, 7.071. So uh, that implies then uh, we go to uh, the next thing that is distance from a point to a circle. So if we close that there, uh, we have distance from a point to a circle. So if you're given a circle, uh, we have two ways of interpreting uh, that sentence, distance from a point to a circle. So we can have the distance outside the circle, or we can have the distance inside the circle. So here we'll be talking about the distance from this point the circle and here we'd be talking about the distance from that point to uh, the circle. So for both of them uh, the formula is uh, we can come up we can derive the formula so if you have this as your center uh, let's say the coordinates are hk and we have our point P1 here with x1, y1. And we have our point here, P2 with x2, y2. So our interest is this distance from here to here. Uh, we know that uh, this distance is going to be, let's say we call this R1 with coordinates x, with coordinates x, y. So then uh, we know that uh, we'll be talking about uh, this distance being P1C minus R. So P1C is the distance from here to here, then we subtract R. Uh, P1C, on the other hand, would be uh, the square root of, of course, again using Pythagoras, or we can use the distance formula. This would give us x1 minus h squared plus y1 minus k r squared, and then we are subtracting r. So this would be P1C C minus r. Now, if the, di uh, the, the point is inside the circle, uh, the only difference would be this time around we would have r minus. So we'd be talking about the whole of this distance subtracting uh, this one. So we'd have r minus, so I can call this r2. So we'd be talking about uh, the distance p2 r2. So that would be our radius minus uh, P, mm, C, P2. So minus C, P2. 
and CP2, on the other hand, would be the distance between these two points, which would be now R minus the square root of X2 minus H squared plus Y2 minus K squared. So uh, we can make a general uh, a general formula out of that, and uh, it is uh, the fact that this distance is square root of a minus h squared. Of course, uh, the, the the point from where we are looking at the distance having the coordinates a b. So a minus h squared plus b minus k squared uh, minus r. Uh, of course. Uh, it's going to be negative if uh, the point is outside the circle because, of course, R is going to be of a shorter distance than uh, this other part. So, and it's going to be negative if we are talking about it's inside uh, the circle. So we have an example here. Find the distance from the point 2, 3 to the circle and state whether it lies inside, outside, or on the circle. Of course, it would lie on the circle if the distance is uh, the same as the radius. I would lie outside uh, if we are seeing that we have a positive distance and it would be lying inside if we have a negative distance. So we, uh, that is a way to go about it. Now we have x squared minus, so we get uh, the standard, uh, the standard uh, equation. Then uh, we get the distance is that, which gives us 1.32. Uh, equation of tangent to a circle. So let uh, we have that point being the point of contact of a circle. This uh, this is a circle that has its center at not at the origin. So equation of the tangent is given by x minus h, x1 minus h plus y minus k, y1 minus k is equals to r squared. So we have an example here. I uh, find the equation of the tangent to a circle. Uh, we are given the circle. The equation of the circle is that, and uh, the point of contact is five six. So the solution is uh, we have to put it in standard, uh, in standard form uh, so that uh, we can be able to express it in this way. So we have x minus 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to 25. And then uh, we break this uh, so that we can bring in, uh, we can be able to factor in uh, the point 5, 6. So we'll have our x1. Uh, our x1 is 5 and of course our y1 is 6. So we have x1 minus 1 into 5 minus 1 plus y3, y minus 3 into 6 minus 3 is equals to 25, which gives us our, the equation of the line as, uh, as 4x plus 3y is equals to 38. Uh, we go next to orthogonal uh, circles, and we say that two circles are said to be orthogonal if they intersect at right angles. So by intersecting at right angles, uh, we talk about the scenario where we have, this is our first circle, and this is our second circle. Then we have our tangent here, and we have our next tangent there so the intersecting at uh, right angles there so this is our circle one uh, with this uh, circle one its center is uh, let's see center one and this is center uh, center two so this is the radius of circle one this is the radius of circle two so that implies that if we draw we connect C1 and C2, uh, we'll have R1 squared plus R2 squared is equals to C1, C2, uh, C1, C2 squared, by virtue of the fact that this is a right angled triangle. So uh, this is the formula we use uh, to confirm whether two given circles are orthogonal or not. So we have an example there. We are supposed to show whether the circle x squared plus y squared minus 4x uh, minus 6x is equals to 22 is orthogonal to uh, the circle x squared plus. So we have x, x squared 
plus y squared so we have x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 6y and then we have minus 212 uh, is equals to 0 and we have the other circle which is um, x squared plus y squared uh, minus 44x minus 36x minus 44x minus 36y plus 408 i is equals to 0. So we need to have the radius of each circle and then we also need to get uh, the coordinates of the centers so that we can be able to find uh, the distance between uh, the two centers. So we express this, this will give us x minus 2 squared uh, plus y minus 3 squared uh, is going to be 212. Uh, we can just look at that here. It's done. So that would give us uh, our first center. So this should give us, this goes to 225. Uh, so that implies that our first center is 2, uh, 3. Then uh, the same we do with the second equation that we begin there. X, x squared plus y squared minus 44x minus 36x plus 48 is 0. So that would give us our centers, our center 2. So this is center 1. Center 2 is uh, 2218. Uh, so that is 2218. And R2. So R1 is 25, and then R2 uh, should give us uh, 20. So what is remaining for us uh, is to, to show that this, this is true. So if this is true, then it implies that uh, the circles are orthogonal. So R1 squared plus R2 squared, that would give us 225 uh, plus, uh, we can check that out here. So that would give us 225 plus 400, which will give us uh, 625 and then we get the distance c1 c2 uh, so using the distance formula that would give us 22 minus 2 squared and then we are adding that to 18 minus 3 squared so that also is giving us a uh, root of 625 we square that should give us 625 so we can see that the distance between the two centers is 625 and uh, the sum of the radii uh, is also 625 so in that case uh, this circle is orthogonal. Then next we move to conic sections. So conic sections today will only cover uh, the parabola. So a conic section is a locus of a point described such that the ratio of its distance from a fixed point to that from a fixed line is a constant. Uh, this ratio is called the eccentricity and it's denoted by E and the fixed line is called the directrix, the fixed point the focus. The locus is a parabola if E is 1 it's an ellipse if E is less than 1, and it's a hyperbola if E is greater than uh, 1. So let's talk about the parabola. So we are saying that uh, the conic section is a parabola if E is equal to 1. And this eccentricity, we are saying, uh, is uh, the ratio uh, of the distance. So this parabola in the first place, uh, uh, if we draw uh, this parabola here, uh, there are those features that we need to familiarize ourselves with or to uh, get to know them clearly. So first, a parabola has an axis of symmetry. So an axis of symmetry is uh, the line that divides a parabola into two equal parts. So in this case, uh, for this kind of parabola that I've chosen, uh, the axis of symmetry is the x-axis. Uh, then, apart, apart from that, we are saying that the parabola is a locus of points uh, such that the distance of any point that you pick on that uh, on the parabola is the distance is the same from a point that we call the directrix, a line that we call the directrix, and a point that we call the focus. 
So the distance from here to this point and from here to this point uh, is the same. So it doesn't matter where you pick the point on, on the parabola. I, they all agree to the fact that the distance from uh, the directrix and from the focus uh, is the same. So this F uh, is what we call the focus. And then the line we call the, this is the directrix. So directrix. Then uh, the other thing is that uh, a parabola has its vertex. So that is the vertex of a parabola and the vertex is always or the distance from the vertex to the focus is always a units and again the distance from the vertex uh, to the directrix is always a unit so this is equally a, a unit so from uh, the directrix to the vertex a unit and then from the vertex to the focus also a unit uh, on the parabola we have what we call focal cords. So focal cords are basically uh, lines that pass through uh, the focus and uh, they touch the parabola on both sides. So all, all this is a one, fo one focal cord, this is another focal cord, all these are focal cord for as long as they pass through the focus and uh, they touch the parabola on both sides. We have what we also call focal distance. Focal distance is the distance from uh, the parabola, any point on the parabola to the focus. So uh, this from this point of the parabola to this point is a focal cord. Uh, same to, we can uh, still say, this one is also a focal cord for as long as it's a point from uh, the parabola to uh, the focus, okay? There is one particular focal cord that is very relevant and it's called the lattice rectum. The lattice rectum is a focal cord that is perpendicular uh, to the axis of symmetry. So there's only one line that is perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. So this is our axis of symmetry. Uh, that one particular cord, focal cord, that is perpendicular to the axis of symmetry is called uh, the lattice rectum. And generally the lattice rectum uh, is 4A units. Okay. 4A units. Now, standard equation of a parabola, if you talk about the standard equation of a parabola, uh, this is dependent first on uh, where the vertex of the parabola is. So we have the first scenario where the vertex is at the origin. So if the vertex is at origin, we have four different types of parabolas. So we have the parabola that is opening outwards to the right, a vertex at the origin. So uh, this is our parabola. F has coordinates A0. Remember we said that from the vertex to the to, to our focus is A units. So that implies that we'll, this will give us our coordinates of F as A0. And remember again we say that uh, the directrix is equally A units from the vertex. Our vertex here has the coordinates uh, 0, 0. Then our directrix is here. It's going to be X is equals to negative A because uh, of course it's on the negative side of our Y axis. So this is our y-axis, uh, this is our x-axis. So we take a point P that is on the parabola that has coordinates x, y. And we are saying that uh, the ratio that you're looking at is uh, that one from the focus to the point P and from the directrix to, so we can give the directrix, uh, the, we can title it uh, DM. So uh, from this, we know that we are talking about it being a parabola if PM or PF over PM or PF over PM is equals to one, the distance is the same. So uh, if we have uh, the parabola opening outwards to the right, uh, the equation here is Y 
is equal to 4 a x and we get this equation uh, using uh, this ratio. So we get PF, uh, PF we can get uh, the length of PF so that would give us x minus so this is PF, PF is going to be the square root of x minus a squared plus y minus 0 squared and then pm pm we are saying is the distance it's going to be the distance from here to uh, here so the distance from here to here is the one that is x so that would give us pm as x plus x plus a so if now we want to get uh, the equation of this parabola uh, we simply need to use that uh, the fact that pf over pm uh, is equals to 1 and we've said that our pf so that implies that uh, which implies that square root of x squared minus x rather x minus a squared plus y minus a squared so over our pm is x plus a uh, is equals to 1 so that implies that x minus a squared plus y minus this is y minus 0 y minus 0 squared is equals to x plus a squared if we do away with the square root so if we open up this we get x squared minus 2xa a x plus a squared plus y squared is equals to x squared plus 2ax plus this should be So this implies that we have x squared, uh, we have y squared, uh, is equals to cause this and this will cancel, this and this will cancel, uh, will give us 4ax. So that is the equation of a parabola that has its center, its vertex at the origin and is opening outwards to the right. Now the rest, uh, we will just uh, make the conclusions about the equations. So if the parabola is opening outwards to the left, as you can see with this one, the parabola is opening outwards to the left. So that is a scenario. Uh, the equation is y is equals to negative 4. y squared, this should be y squared, that should be y squared, this, these are all squared. So that should be... So uh, if the parabola is opening outwards to the left, Uh, with the vertex still at the origin. So vertex is at 0, 0. And then we'll still have our focus here, only that it will be negative a, 0. The coordinates of the focus will be negative a, 0. Our directrix will be on this side, it will be x is equals to a. And then I will have our point p here having coordinates x, y. I will have uh, m here and d here. So again, we're looking at that distance. And uh, the equation of the parabola here, is x squared uh, is y squared is equals to negative 4a x uh, we have two other remaining uh, in terms of vertex at the origin so i'll draw them here uh, we have the one that is opening upwards so this one that is opening upwards we still have our focus somewhere here this time around the coordinates will be oa and we can pick our point uh, p to be somewhere here uh, with coordinates x, y, and then we'll have our uh, directrix. Our directrix here will be y is equal to negative a, and then uh, we'll use the same argument. Uh, the distance between the two, and this this is our vertex still at zero zero, coordinates zero zero at the origin. That is, this is our y coordinate. This is our x coordinate. Now. The equation of this parabola that opens out outwards is x squared uh, is equals to 4ay. And then uh, the last one is the one that opens downwards. 
So uh, again, we still have our focus here, but the coordinates are going to be uh, 0, negative A. I will have our point P somewhere here. You can pick it to be here, X, Y. Our directrix is going to be here, Y is equals to A, a this time round. And then again, we'll be looking at the ratio of that and that. Uh, from the drawing, it looks like this one is longer, but the argument should be that they should be uh, the same. Only the drawing is saying otherwise, uh, but the fact is they should be the same. So then uh, this one will give us x squared is equals to negative 4a y. So x squared is equals to negative 4a y. So those, those, these four are are the equation of parabolas, standard equations of parabolas that have their uh, vertex at the origin. So the one that opens outwards to the right, the equation is y squared is equals to 4x. The one that opens outwards to the left, the equation is y is equals to negative 4x. Uh, note, note that uh, what differentiates them is just the negative sign, which shows direction. And then we have the one that opens upwards to the right, up, upwards, and the one that opens downwards. Again, uh, this one is uh, x squared is equals to 4ay, and then uh, the one that opens downwards is x squared is equals to negative 4ay. So those are the parabolas that have their vertices at the origin. What about if we have a parabola whose vertex is not at the origin? So we have uh, with the vertex at C1, C2, and focus, HK. So the coordinates of the focus are HK, and uh, the coordinates of the vertex are uh, C1, uh, C2. So still we'll have the four scenarios, the one that opens outwards to the right, the one that opens outwards to the left, uh, the one that opens downwards, and the one that opens upwards. So. Uh, we have this one. So uh, this is still our y-axis. This is still our x-axis. And then our vertex is here with coordinates C1, C2. Uh, we have our focus here with coordinates HK. Uh, we have our point here P, which has coordinates X, Y. Then we have our directrix here, we can say x is equals to d uh, for the sake of it now. And then we'll be looking at that distance versus this distance and just saying that it is 1, okay? So uh, still uh, we get pf, so pf uh, is going to be square root of x minus h squared plus y minus k r squared. We get pm. pm is going to be x minus d. Uh, remember the distance from here to here is d, and the distance from here uh, to this point is x. So uh, from here to here uh, is going to be x minus minus d. So then uh, we quit the same. Uh, to, avoid, uh, to avoid having too many unknowns, uh, we can uh, use some facts here. Uh, we know that C2 uh, is going to be K. C2 is going to be K because you're talking about the same Y coordinate at that point. And then uh, we can say H uh, is going to be, we know that uh, the distance from here to here this is a units, and the distance from here to here is actual is actually also uh, a units. So we can say that h, the distance, h being the distance from here uh, to here, is actually uh, we are talking about h. H is uh, this. So the h is the distance from uh, this point to this point. And then we know that uh, C2, C1 is a distance from here to here. And we know that this distance from here to here is A. So we should be able to express, uh, we can be able to express H uh, in terms of that. 
So that would give us H being uh, C2. So that would be rather C, C1 plus A. So that would give us the distance from here to here for C1 and then the distance from here to here as A. Okay. And then D. Uh, D is the distance from here to here. So distance from here to here, again, we can say is a distance from here to here minus this distance. So that would give us H uh, D is this distance. So uh, that would give us, let me, let me get it clearly from here so that I don't Yes, I can get it from here. So uh, D is going to be a C1 minus A. So C1 minus A, C O actually. So we use distance from here to here minus this distance. That should give us the D. So that is D, C1 minus A. So now that we have all that, uh, we express them and equate. So that should give us PF as a square root of uh, x minus c1 minus a squared, so uh, we have expressed that one, plus y minus k, y minus c2, k is c2. Uh, this is also squared. And then our pm uh, is going to be x minus c1 plus, plus a. Okay, and then we equate the two. So that implies that x minus c1 minus a squared plus y minus c2 squared should give us x minus c1 plus a r squared. Of course, uh, we do away with the square root by squaring both sides. So this will give us, uh, you work this out. Uh, this will give us x squared minus c1x uh, minus ax minus c1x uh, plus c1 squared plus ac1 uh, plus y minus c2 uh, plus uh, we open up that one also that would give us x squared uh, minus c1x uh, plus ax uh, minus c1x uh, minus c plus c1 squared and then minus ac1 uh, plus this one is still not complete uh, let me let me do it on this other side uh, so that we can have enough space we have x minus plus So that should give us x minus uh, c1 minus a squared plus y minus c2 squared uh, plus x minus c1 plus a. Uh, this should be equals to squared. So if you open up this, this will give us x squared minus c1x minus ax uh, minus c1x uh, plus c1 squared plus AC1 minus AX uh, plus AC1 plus A squared. And then we are adding that to Y minus C2 squared. And then we are saying is equals to, so this will give us X squared minus C1X minus C1X. <coughs> and then uh, plus AX minus C1x plus C1 squared uh, minus AC1 or C1a and then plus AX uh, minus AC1 plus A squared. So uh, we have those that will cancel. 
So this one will cancel, that one will cancel, uh, this one will be carried forward, this one will cancel, uh, that one will cancel, uh, this one will move to the other side, uh, this one will cancel, this one will move to the other side, that will cancel. So this will give us uh, negative 2x. So this one and this one will give us negative 2x. We add to this one and this one, it will give us a 4x. So on this other side, we can remain with y minus c2 squared. And then we already have 4ax out of uh, the ones that have ticked. Then we have ac1 and ac1. So those are two. Uh, ac1, ac1. So that would give us minus. 4ac1. So that is y minus c2 squared is equals to 4a into x minus a c1. So this gives us the standard equation of a parabola that has its vertex, not at the origin. It has its vertex with coordinate c1, c2, and it's focus at hk. So to summarize all of them in terms of uh, the parabolas, I'll draw each and every one of them. Uh, so the first one we've done is this one. Uh, so it has its vertex at C1, C2, and it has its focus at, at HK, and it's opening outwards to the right. Uh, we are saying that its equation is Y minus C2 squared is equals to 4A into X minus C1. So when you talk about the one that is opening outwards to the right, so uh, this scenario, uh, we have this as our F is good in uh, v, this is hk, vertex uh, c1, c2, uh, we have our p somewhere there, we have our directrix, so that is the, the ratio we are talking about. So this one uh, has its equation as y minus c2 squared is equals to negative 4a into x minus, uh, minus c1. Then uh, if we look at the ones that are opening upwards and downwards, so this one, uh, we start with that one. Uh, still, uh, the other arguments are all uh, the same. So this is our directrix. Uh, this is our vertex with coordinates C1, C2. Uh, this is our focus with coordinates HK. And then again, uh, our P somewhere here, we are looking at that, that, the ratio of that and that. So this will give us uh, the, the standard equation as x minus c1 squared is equals to 4a into y minus c2. And then the last one, uh, the one that opens downwards to the, that opens downwards, so we can have it something like that. And then uh, this is our directrix, this is our axis of symmetry, our axis of symmetry, this is our vertex, our uh, vertex has coordinates C1, C2, and then we have our point P somewhere here with coordinates X, Y, and then uh, this one, uh, the standard equation of the parabola is X minus C1 squared is equals to negative 4A into Y minus, minus C2. So these are the standard equations of the parabolas that have their centers not at uh, the origin. So we can check. Uh, it's the same thing that uh, is represented on those on the slide. Uh, we have this one vertex at C1, C2. Uh, those are our so examples. Find the equation of the specified uh, parabola. So the first parabola that you're given uh, has its vertex. Uh, has its vertex at uh, zero, zero, uh, zero, zero, and its focus at zero and uh, negative three. So for all the parabolas that you're given, uh, you must, the first thing you must be able to relate to is uh, what is the position of the vertex in relation to uh, the uh, focus. Where is the focus? Where is the directrix? Or where is the focus vertex? So, uh, if you 
uh, get uh, the picture of the scenario here, uh, the vertex is at the origin. So you're talking about that vertex. So the question is, in which direction is the parabola opening towards? Is it right, left, up, or uh, down? So that you can be able to know the standard equation. So like uh, in this case, you're talking about uh, the focus being 0, negative 3. So 0, negative 3 uh, will be somewhere here. So uh, zero. this is uh, 0, negative 3. So that is where our focus is. So then again, uh, the other thing is uh, uh, you must be able to know how where is the focus in relation to where the vertex is. So we see that that is a, a parabola that is opening downwards. So if it's opening downwards, then we know that uh, the, the standard equation of this parabola is x is equal to negative 4 a y. Uh, the vertex is at the origin, so uh, that is the standard equation. Then from here, what next you're supposed to do is to get what is a. We say that a is the distance from uh, the vertex to the focus. So the distance from the vertex to the focus is 3 units. So that implies that our equation is x is equal to negative 12 y. So if you're given a uh, second example, you're given uh, the vertex at 2, 4, and you're given the focus at 6, uh, 4. So from this, you can clearly get the axis of symmetry as y is equal to 4. So axis of symmetry is y is equal to 4. And then uh, you look at the relation uh, between where the focus is and uh, where the... So from that, uh, we can see that the standard equation so if you look at where 6, 4 is, uh, 2, 4 is for the vertex, and where 6, 4 is uh, for the focus, uh, it implies that the parabola we have is y minus c2 squared is equal to 4a x minus a c1. So this is the parabola that opens outwards to the right. So then... Uh, we only need to feed in what is our C2, what is our C1. So C2 and C1 are the coordinates of the vertex. So we have C1 as 2 and C2 as 4. So what is remaining for us to get is uh, A. A is the distance from uh, the vertex to the focus. So the vertex to the focus here is 4 units. So that implies that our equation is Y minus 4 squared is equals to uh, so this one we say this four units, so 16 into x minus uh, 2. So that is the standard equation. Now, uh, we get the general equation of a uh, parabola basically by opening up uh, the standard equation. So if we open up this, I uh, will get y squared minus a 4y mm, minus 16x. And then this will be 16. And then this will be negative 32. So that would be negative 48. So negative 48, we bring in this side, will be positive 48. So y squared, uh, this should be 8y, sorry. This should be 8y. So y squared minus 8y minus 16x plus 48 is equals to uh, 0. So this is uh, the general equation of uh, this parabola. So we move to our next example. Uh, that is uh, example three. Uh, we are supposed this time round, uh, unlike the first instance uh, or the first two examples where we are given the vertex and the focus. Here we are given the focus and uh, the equation of the directrix. So you have the focus at zero four, and then uh, the equation of the directrix y is equals to negative four. So then, so you have uh, your your focus at zero four and the directrix as y is equals to negative r4. So uh, from looking at the two, uh, considering that the vertex is in between uh, the two of them, this implies that uh, this, this parabola has its vertex at the origin. So uh, the question is just which direction is it opening outwards to? So we have the directrix y is equals to negative 4. So if you draw that, you'll have y is equals to negative 4 here, and then you'll have 0, 4. So 0, 4. 
focus sorry focus is here 04 04 so four units down four units down that implies that you have your vertex you have your vertex at zero zero and uh, it implies that the parabola is opening upwards so that would give you an x squared is equals to 4ay so we only need to get what is our a a is four units of course you're talking about the distance from the the directrix to the vertex or the vertex to the focus that is four units so that would give us x squared is equals to 16 uh 16 y and then uh, the second example to this you're given focus as negative one negative one one and directrix is uh, x minus 1 i is equals to 0 so this is just the line x is equals to 1 so again you must be able to relate the two where is your focus where is this so x is equals to 1 will be here so x is equals to 1 and negative 1 1 negative 1 1 will be somewhere here so this is your focus this is your directrix so that implies again that uh, the vertex is somewhere in between which will imply here one unit one unit so we are talking about this kind of scenario so it is opening outwards to the left if it's opening outwards to the left and the vertex is not at the origin that implies that we are talking about uh, this is y minus c1 rather c2 squared is equals to negative 4a into x minus c1 so that is the star uh, standard equation of the parabola we only need to feed in what we have so uh, from this we can see that our vertex has the coordinates 0 1 uh, 0 1 just a minute this is x is equals to 1 uh, okay that is our y this is our x So that implies that our vertex is, is at the coordinate zero 01. So C1 is 0, and so that would give us y minus 1 squared is equals to, and then A, A units. So this is 1 unit. So that would give us negative 4 uh, into x minus 0. So that implies that we have y. Uh, squared minus 2y plus 4x plus 1 uh, is equals to 0. So you only need to open up uh, that this equation, it will give you that as the uh, equation of the parabola. So find the fo focus, vertex, length of the lattice rectum, equation of the directrix, and axis of the given uh, parabola. So we are given equations of parabolas there. Uh, we are supposed to get uh, the specified uh, parameters about it. So we have y squared minus 6y plus 8x plus 25 uh, is equals to 0. So uh, we express this in standard form. So this will give us y minus 3 squared. And expressing a parabola from, uh, from standard form to general form, uh, you basically expand uh, the equation. But if you're talking about uh, expressing it from a standard from a general form to standard form, uh, you complete the squares. So you have, two, uh, you have a square here to complete, uh, like this one is a y, so complete the square. And then, uh, so this will give us y minus 3 squared is equals to 8x, negative 8x, of course. And then minus 25 uh, plus 9. Minus 25 plus 9 will give us uh, 16. So that would be uh, negative 16. So y minus 3 squared uh, is negative eight into x plus two. So now we have the standard equation of the parabola. 
So what we need to do next is uh, uh, to answer the questions that we've been asked. So the first one was we get the focus, the vertex, uh, the length of the lattice rectum, equation of the directrix and axis of symmetry. So uh, first let's talk about uh, the vertex. Uh, the vertex will have the coordinates negative 2, uh, 3. And then length of the lattice rectum. Then length of the lattice rectum is 4a, and 4a, of course, is uh, what we have here. So length, I can call it L. Length of the lattice rectum is 8 units. 8 units. Uh, we know that the focus is A units from uh, the vertex of the uh, parabola, so we need to get what is A. Uh, we know that 4a is 8. 4a is 8. Remember, I said that uh, the negative sign is just for direction purposes. Uh, it, is, it is not part of the measurement that, or uh, the length of the lattice rectum here. So 4a is 8, implying a is going to be uh, 2 units. So then uh, the question is, uh, 2 units are moving which direction? So we, this one is a parabola uh, that is opening outwards uh, to the left. So that implies that uh, uh, we are talking about the x coordinate. So we'll have the focus as negative 2 uh, minus 2, uh, 3, which will give us a uh, negative 4. Uh, we'll have the focus. Negative 4, 3. So focus is negative 4, 3. And then the other thing we are supposed to get, so we have so far found the equation of the, uh, the vertex, the focus, the length of the lattice rectum, uh, equation of uh, the directrix and axis of the given uh, parabola. So axis of symmetry, uh, we can get it from uh, the vertex and the focus are all lying on the line y is equals to 3. So axis of symmetry I is axis of symmetry, symmetry is y is equals to 3 and then the last thing is uh, the directrix and you know that the directrix uh, lies uh, 3 or a rather a units a units uh, from the vertex so our vertex is uh, this and uh, the parabola is opening outwards to the left so that implies that I will be moving uh, a units which is 2 units uh, to the right so that would give us negative 2 uh, that would give us zero three. So the uh, directrix. So what next you're looking for is the the axis we found. So equation of directrix. Equation of directrix. So we are talking about uh, three units on the right. So uh, from the vertex, and A is 2 units. So that would give us 2 units on the X. So that would give us a 0. So that's the line Y is equals to a 0. Uh -huh. Just a clarification here, is it y is equals to 0? At the point where x is equals to 0. Yeah, so x is equals to 0, that should be. So the next, I think we go to the next example. Uh, the next example is, um, uh, the next example is this one. x squared plus 6x minus 2y plus 11 is equals to 0. So we have x squared plus 6x minus 2y plus 11 is equals to 0, same thing, uh, this will give us x plus 3, r squared, so is equals to, this is 2i, and then that is minus 11 plus 9, uh, that will give us uh, 2, so minus 11 plus 9, that should give us negative 2, so this, we have x plus 3, squared is equals to 2 into y minus 1, uh, so this one, on the other hand, is a parabola that opens upwards. So we have our vertex as negative 3, 1. So those are the coordinates of the vertex. And then we know that the length of the lattice rectum is 2 units. 
and then uh, we know that A is going to be a half units. So what we need to know is the focus, so the coordinates of the focus. Uh, we have said that this is a parabola that is opening upwards. So upwards, that implies that our focus is going to be negative 3 and 1.5. So negative 3 and uh, 1.5. So uh, by virtue of the fact that uh, we are talking about negative 3, 1, so negative 3, 1. So that is, this is a, the, a, where, uh, how our parabola lies. So that would be where it is. Uh, that implies this is negative 3 and this is 1. So this is negative 3, 1 for our vertex here. Yeah. And then A is 0 0.5 units. So A, uh, that would give us our focus. So that would give be uh, 1.5. So that's where we are getting the 1.5 for our focus. And then uh, length of the lattice rectum we found is 2 units. So this is 2 units. A is a half. Uh, axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry is x is equals to negative 3, axis of symmetry is x is equals to negative uh, negative 3. Uh, then we are supposed to get uh, the directrix, so equation of the directrix. Uh, this is again a units downwards, so that would be uh, 0 0.5 so that would give us y is equals to 0. Point y is equals to 0. 0.5 okay and then we move to the next thing a tangent and normal to a parabola so there's a table here that gives uh, the equation of tangent to a parabola depending on the equation of the parabola so the first four you can see are the parabolas that have their vertex at the origin and uh, for each one of them, we are giving its equation of tangent. So y squared is equal to 4ax. That's a parabola that opens outwards to the right. Uh, its equation of tangent is uh, that. y y1 is equal to 2a into x plus x1. y squared minus 4ax is y y1. Uh, so is this. And then uh, if the parabola is opening upwards, that's its equation of tangent. Uh, if it's opening downwards, equation of tangent, then the next four are parabolas that have their vertex at C1, C2, and focus at uh, HK. So the first one, uh, you can see that is uh, the one that is opening upwards. Again, this is its equation of tangent. Opening, uh, this is opening rightwards, opening leftwards. Uh, this one is opening upwards and downwards again. Those are the equations. So if you're given uh, like this example, find the equation of tangent and normal to the parabola x squared minus 4x minus 8y plus 12 is equals to 0 at the point 4, uh, 3, 2. So the first thing uh, we are talking about there is uh, so uh, if I draw a parabola at random, we are talking about this being our parabola, and we have a point there. And what we are finding out is the equation of uh, that line. So, for example, this is uh, a tangent to this parabola that I've drawn at this point. Uh, let's call it point N. So, depending on uh, which direction the parabola takes, oh, those are the equations of tangent. So, let's go to our example. Find the equation of the tangent and normal to the parabola x squared minus 4x minus 8y plus 12 is equal to 0. Uh, it's good to note that when you're talking about the normal, normal is the line that is perpendicular uh, to the tangent. So once we get the equation of the tangent, uh, we can use the fact that uh, perpendicular lines have the product of their gradient as negative 1, and then use that to find uh, the equation of normal to this parabola. So first, uh, we get the equation of tangent, then we can work on uh, the other part. So we have x squared minus 4x minus 8y plus 12 is equals to 0. So this is a parabola that opens x squared uh, minus 4x plus 8y So we have x squared minus 4x minus 8y plus 12 uh, is equals to 0. So this will give us x minus 2 
uh, squared is equals to uh, negative 8y uh, minus 8. So the, the equation is negative 8 here. So this should give us plus 8y. So we have uh, x minus 2 squared uh, is equals to 8 into y minus 1. So uh, we get uh, the standard equation, uh, and then that implies a, that equation of tangent. And in this case, it will be x minus a 2 into. Uh, so this this n has coordinates x1, y1. So x, and then we have x1 minus 2, or um, i is equals to. Uh, let me give it in in, uh, in terms of the general equation. So this will give us x minus uh, c1 into x1 minus c1 uh, is equals to 2a into uh, y plus y1 minus 2c2. So that is the equation of tangent to uh, this parabola. So we only need to feed in what is our c1, what is our a, what is our y1, what is our c2. So from here, uh, 4a, 4a is 8, so that implies a is 2. And then uh, we know that the vertex, the vertex here is going to be 2, 1. So our c1 is 2, our c2 is 1. So if we insert this here, I will get x minus 2 uh, into our x1 uh, point of tangency uh, here we've been told is uh, 4, 3 over 2. So this is the point of tangency. So this is our x1 and our y1. So that would be 4. Uh, 4 minus 2. 4 minus 2 will give us 2. Uh, is 2a. 2a will give us 4. And then we have y plus y1. y1 is 3 over 2. And then minus so 3 over 2. Minus 2. Our C2 is 1. So then, uh, this will give us 2x minus 4 uh, is equals to 4y. So this is uh, 1.2, 1.5 rather, uh, minus 2, so which is uh, uh, negative, uh, this is 1.5 minus 2, that is negative uh, 0 0.5, so times 4, that would give us 2, so that would give us 2 uh, plus 2. Plus two or minus two. Minus two. That is negative zero point five times four should give us negative two. So that would give us two x uh, minus four y minus two uh, is equals to zero, which we can express at as x minus two y minus one. Uh, is equals to zero. So that is the equation of a tangent to that. Uh, if you go back here, uh, now we have equation of normal. Equation of normal, we said we get, uh, we use the fact that the normal is uh, the line perpendicular to the tangent. So we get the, the gradient of the tangent. Uh, that would give us uh, a half from this, expressing it in terms of a slope intercept form. And then we get what is our gradient. And then, uh, of course, the gradient of uh, the normal is going to be m2, which is going to be negative 2. So then uh, we know that our point of tangency was 4, uh, 4 3 over 2, was 4, uh, 3 over 2. So that would give us y minus 1.5. This uh, over x minus 4 is equal to negative 2, which implies that our equation of normal is. Uh, next, we go to uh, the last bit of uh, parabolas. That is parametric equation of a parabola. Again, uh, we have 
a table showing the different uh, standard equations of parabolas and their respective parametric equations where t is uh, the parameter. So when you have y squared is equals to 4ax, this is a parabola that has its vertex at the origin and opens upwards. Uh, its parametric equations are x is equals to 80 squared and y is equals to 280. So y squared minus 4x, uh, all of them, uh, each and every parabola has its parametric equations uh, with uh, different variations in terms of uh, which side, which direction the parabola is opening outwards to. So we can uh, find, we can do uh, an example, find the parametric equation of the parabola x squared plus yx plus 8y plus 25 is equal to 0. So the first thing, uh, you must be able to, to, uh, to know clearly which side the, uh, w what is the standard equation, what kind of parabola is this, which side is it opening outwards towards. Then, uh, then uh, you will be able to get the respective uh, parametric equation. So uh, x squared plus 6x plus 8y plus 25 is 0. Uh, we can see that uh, this is a parabola that opens uh, downwards. So if it opens downwards and we go back to our table, uh, it's opening downwards. Uh, let's just go back. It's opening downwards, but again we can see that the, its, its vertex is not at the origin, but its vertex is at uh, C1, C2, where our C1 is actually negative 3 and our C2 is negative uh, 2. So that implies uh, we have said that it's, it's opening downwards. We go back down. We go back there, then the last page. And then uh, we check which one it is. So uh, these ones are the ones that are opening upwards and downwards. So uh, this one is the one that is opening downwards. So that implies that x is 280 plus c1 and y is negative 80 squared plus uh, c2. So uh, we are talking about x. Uh, we are here x is 280 plus x is 280 plus c1 and y is negative 80 squared plus c2 so that's what we need from so we come here uh, we find we find the standard equation so standard equation is uh, standard equation is this one uh, so from here, we have our vertex as negative 3 and negative 2. We have our A as 2 units. So you can tell that from the fact that 4A is 8, so A is 2. So we combine that with what we have here. So that would give us X as 40. Uh, that is 2 times 2, which is 4, T minus 3. And then Y is going to be 2T squared minus R3. So if we pick any parabola that we've worked on, uh, this one is opening outwards to the, this one is opening upwards. So, uh, so if we use that one, x minus 2 squared, and then um, is equals to 8 into y minus 1. So this one is opening upwards. Uh, if you want to get its parametric equation, uh, we simply go here, and then uh, we get uh, x is going to be, 280 uh, plus C1 and then Y is going to be 80 squared plus 80 squared plus C2. So we only need to, to fill in that information. Uh, from here again A is 2 and then we have C1 is 2 and C2 as positive 1. So our X would be uh, 2 times 2 so that would give us 40 plus uh, C1, so plus 2, and then y would give us a t squared, so a is 2, so 2t two squared plus uh, c2 is c2 is 1 plus 1, so this would be the uh, parametric uh, equations. Uh, let's see if we can get a y, a different kind of parabola. Uh, uh, y squared minus 6y, so y squared minus 6y minus 6y plus 8x plus 25 is equals to 0. So this one, uh, this would give us y minus 3 uh, is equals to negative 8x. So this would be minus 16 uh, plus 9. 
uh, minus 25 rather plus 9 that would give us minus uh, minus 16 so that would give us y minus 3 squared uh, is equals to negative 8 into x plus r2 so uh, in this case we have our c1 as negative 2 our c2 as positive 3 and then our a is 2 uh, this is a parabola that is opening to the left, outwards to the left. So we come, we check what is the parametric equation of parabola that opens outwards to the left and has its center not at the origin. So I uh, will be talking about this one. So this is the one that is opening outwards to the left. So we have x as negative 80 squared plus c1. So x is negative 80 squared. A is 2. So that would give us negative 2 t squared plus uh, c1. c1 is negative 2, so that would give us plus 2. Mm, so eight, negative 8 t squared plus c1, so this would be minus. Because it's negative 2, so plus negative 2 would give us negative 2. And then y, the parametric equation, y would give us, uh, y is, uh, we've seen that it is opening. Uh, to the left, so this would give us uh, y is equals to 280 plus c2, 280. So 2 times 2 is 4, t plus c2, c2 is 3. So those would be the parametric uh, equations. So that is the end of our lesson. Uh, uh, we'll continue with. Uh, the ellipse as our next conic section uh, next time. Thank you. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.